You know how much I really didn't want to make this video. I really didn't. I didn't. But you can tell by the title that I'm trying to keep my thoughts on the anime Yasuke a bit more secretive. Well, that would be because a few months back, I, or rather a month back, I talked about how good the anime looked. God damn it. God fucking damn it, I was wrong. I hate it. I hate it. I, I, I can't even, I can't even joke how much I hate this. Yasuke is a bad anime. It's, I don't even get how. Before anybody says anything in the comments, wait until the end of the video, please. Because this actually does hurt for me to say. So, a bit of backstory. Yasuke, the slave, I mean, the former slave, or rather, man who became a slave, then a bunch of other stuff happened, then he was unfortunately returned to slavery, was a slave of an Italian missionary going to Japan around the, fifth, around the early 1580s. For a few years... He and his master ended up touring the entirety of Japan. One day, the the shogun at the time, the notorious Oda Nobunaga, brought him in because of his size, six foot two, and because he was reportedly able to have the strength of ten men. From then on, Yasuke was made the retainer of Nobunaga. And then, or actually, bear in mind, that was all in the year 1589. In the year 1590, Oda Nobunaga faced a horrid, horrid betrayal by one of the people that was closest to him. And, well, the result of that was Yasuke being sent back into slavery in Europe. Where he most likely died. Why am I telling you all this? Fuck if I know, because that doesn't exactly play too much of a point on the fucking anime. That's actually my first problem. The story takes place in 1602. You know, years after Yasuke would have been sent back to Europe. In Japan. And he is a drunk living out his days as a boatsman in a village in the middle of bumblefuck Yamato. I don't know. Where he ends up finding a girl with magical abilities and a mother who asks him to escort her towards a doctor that would be able to teach her how to use these magical abilities. All the while, he's, he's pursued by... And you're going to have to believe me on this. A werebear, a stereotypical ninja chick, some African shaman priest guy, I, I I don't know, and a robot. Not not like some sort of clockwork wood and steel sort of robot. I'm talking 22nd century technology. And this is the dumbest part of the whole thing. He's also pursued by A European Catholic priest who is a magical mutant in 1602 Japan. Now, listen, I, I get that this isn't supposed to be historically accurate. In fact, I actually learned that this isn't even supposed to be historically accurate. And it didn't exactly, you know, infuriate me. Because you could actually do a lot of interesting stuff with historical fiction. But when I thought magic, I was thinking something like old school Shinto stuff, you know? Like old school Onmyo sort of magic, Onmyoji stuff. 
when I was thinking Mecha, I was thinking something like Clockwork Machines. I mean, there were old dolls that used to run on old clock-based technology. Gears, springs, all that stuff. All that old stuff. And, <laughs> and everything just goes to shit the moment they're introduced. How so? Well, let's explain how the robots got there. Somehow, some way, robots in 1602, the technology that almost looked like it comes from, say, the year 2191, ends up coming over to Japan from Mongolia around the time that they invaded islands like Tsushima. I would like to remind everyone that the invasion of Tsushima by the, Mong by the Mongol hordes was done 300 years before Yasuke was even a samurai. How the fuck does that make sense? No, I get that there's also anime like Afro Samurai or something that also has this sort of weird-ass world in which all these different things can happen. But here's the thing. Afro Samurai's world only exists as a action nut show. You can just pretty much throw anything in there and it fit. Mainly because anything in there is supposed to be awesome. It's supposed to be an awesome-looking enemy. That's it. But Yasuke is supposed to be this serious story. It's supposed to be this dark, grim story. You know, something like your berserks, like your vagabonds, like fucking anything but Yasuke. I, I, mean, I just don't get this. I, I really don't. Yasuke is also, as I said before, the biggest weak point in this anime. As in, you could take him out of this and nothing would be different. Replace him with some other black samurai. Replace him with some other guy that was supposed to be this, I don't know, this wandering vagabond with black skin or something like that. And nothing at all would be different. And that's an especially bad thing because when your title character is one of the more superfluous parts of your story, you don't know you fucked up in the writing sense. There's also the sense that Yasuke, and it really hurts for me to say this, isn't as interesting as it posed in. I mean, yeah, they write him in as being sort of this warrior poet, but when he's not in the warrior poet thing, haunted by the PTSD of the death of his master, he's kind of dull. He's just this drunk or washed up has been who just lummoxes about. And that's not as exciting as listening about this, uh, you, you know, this warrior philosopher who just relives the days of all conflict in his head while in a drunken stupor. That is interesting. But outside of that, he doesn't really have much character to speak of. And then there's the character Saki, who is both annoying character-wise and annoying writing-wise. How should I put this nicely? The, the way of how they integrate her magic is more fucked than a blonde in a frat house. I wish I was joking, but that's, that's the case. Because just doesn't make sense. The magic is not even built in properly. And a tip I would honestly give to other writers like myself, I've heard this before, you want to make sure that your magic feels like it's actually naturally a part of this world, and the magic doesn't. It just doesn't work in this world. You could integrate it a lot more by saying that, I mean, by say, I don't know, adding in a good power system? A good form of integration with the story. Make it feel like it's always been there. Just in the shadows or something like that. But they just don't do that. They just kind of say, oh look, there's magic by the first episode. And it's just... And Saki 
her magical progression takes three episodes. Now, I know that a lot of people would probably do something stupid like say, Oh, dude, you like Black Clover. What about that, huh? Oh, you stupid bitch. Taste that. In Black Clover, people actually have to work at earning their magic. Otherwise, it's just a big chaotic mess that they can't do nothing with. In three episodes, the girl that Yasuke is looking over, which added a bit of a lone wolf and cub vibe to that, ends up going from uncontrollably unleashing her magical powers to handling it better than literally anybody else except for the secret bad guy, which I'll get to in a second, in the span of one itty bitty episode. You see the problem here? Writing your characters into which they end up becoming stronger or something like that, or mastering this huge thing is really hard to do. And one of the worst things that you can do is write it to where their progression happens instantaneously. Now, if you were to say that they were to utilize competently some small part of it very quickly in the sense that a person could die if they don't, and the adrenaline is just kicking in, that's fine. But to say that they end up using pretty much fucking anything with that little excuse, it's not going to work. It just, it does not work. That's not how a power progression works. Using, I mean, getting minorly competent in one thing in a stressful situation, that's, that's one thing entirely. Gaining master level competency over every sort of magic, like say, restoration, astral plane walking, combat of telekinesis, anything like that. That's something else fucking entirely. And then there's also the fact that I really just don't like the minor characters in this. I mean, the werebear Russian, while stupid, given the fact that in 1602, no foreigner would even be alive on the main island without getting hunted down by the soldiers of... Hmm, wait, who was in charge before Hideyoshi? Ah, oh, whatever. The werebear was honestly the more likable character of the bunch, followed up by the African priest. The other two were just dumb. They were just annoying and dumb. Like the stereotypical ninja chick with a large sickle staff thing. She was just so... Oof. Like she had this sort of stereotypical sadist personality, like she just didn't care about nothing. And the robot was just freaking stupid. Like they tried to write him as this sort of Baymax-ish character who points out just the dumbest things. Like, oh, I thought you were the only black guy in Japan, African priest man. But it appears I was wrong. Yes, he was black. <laughs> it was just... Annoying dialogue like that cannot be made funny. But it just doesn't work here. Especially when you consider... Consider this. That the historical records of Oda Nobunaga... As stated with everyone here, as they knew him, would have included Yasuke! <sighs> the hinting towards a romance between Yasuke and this Iga chick who I can't remember, that would have been amazing. That would have been an amazing storyline, but say it with me now. It was butchered. Horribly. Like, seriously. The sum of this whole show, an arthritic blind butcher couldn't have slaughtered this worse if he tried. How would I make this better? Well, honestly, I'd, honestly, I'd just stick more with a more vagabond-ish story and then just sort of leak in a tiny bit of berserk with a small hint towards... A lone wolf and cub story with Oda Nobunaga's younger son instead. While also trying to work in clockwork mecha instead. You know? Having them operate by these large battery packs 
on the back, you know, like the normal galvanizing whatevers that actually used to exist centuries ago. That would have made sense. That would have actually worked a lot better. And having just these large machines made of wood and steel just moving around, that would have been a lot better. Hell, pull a puppet princess and have Oda Nobunaga's kid end up learning how to control them. Have that be an arc for a full season and show how competent he gets by the end of it. And Yasuke, make him more interesting, you know? Like, the man was said to be well-mannered, that is true, but another thing you could try to do is, well, show the mental scars he had from training, you know? All that sort of stuff. And also, maybe a bit more accuracy. Like, if you want to show Oda Nobunaga and Yasuke in their legendary bromance as it was, that's fine. That's fine. In fact, I actually support that. But don't tease me with it, assholes. Oh, and that's another thing. The way of how they write Oda Nobunaga in this is... weird. Very, very... weird. They write him to be like how most people would historically know Oda Nobunaga to be. You know, like, crazed, bloodthirsty, megalomaniac and all that. And yet, he's weirdly one of the nicer characters, I guess? You know? In comparison to Yosuke? Or how they treat him? You know what I mean? Anyway. The way that I say it's written weird is because... They portray him as being a good leader towards his cabinet. And they try to make that sort of theorized relationship he had with a young... Oh, God, what was his name? With the young guy whose name I can't remember. More blatant, so to speak. But um, they also kind of write him with a bit of a bloodthirsty edge preaching the ideas of making a more progressive Japan and whatnot. But the dumbest thing, too, was how he basically said, Come, my son, to Yasuke in the middle of a, in the middle of a cabinet meeting. Oh, God, that was just so stupid to me, you know? I mean, oh, fuck me. Just hearing that come from... Oda Nobunaga, a grown-ass man, telling that to another grown-ass man that he didn't... <laughs> that he never really talked to <laughs> Yasuke. <laughs> oh, man, that killed me. That killed me. Oh. And you see why I can't take the writing seriously, too? I mean, they try to make it this overly serious story when they make not enough serious moments and almost too many light-hearted moments. It's a bit of a strange argument to make, but a serious story does have more lighthearted moments between its main character and minor characters or supporting cast. Or if you're berserk with your main antagonist. Now, there are a lot of good things in this. The art, for example, is beautiful. It's very nice. The animation, even more so. It was made by Mappa. You know, the same guys who did Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah, it was pretty good. I'm not going to lie, the animation was nice. The music, I also liked. Anybody who knows me will know I'm more of an auditory guy than anything else. I am absolutely obsessed with music. So, when I ended up hearing the music throughout the entire show, while I was confused with the hip-hop vibe, I didn't hate it. You know? It was one of those things where you're confused, but you enjoy it. It was nice. It was cool. And even through the fight scenes, it was enjoyable. Even if I felt like I was going to drift to sleep at some point. That could be because that the artist behind the music was known for making those bumper songs for Adult Swim. Oh, God. And despite what I'm saying about the music, I'm neutral about the opening. I'd want to say I really like it, but 
um, I don't, I don't hate it, but I don't like it. Oh, man. I can already tell I'm going to get flame blasted for this, for not liking this anime. But what I would honestly want is maybe a revisit of this. And bear in mind, I don't hate the writer or the director, who I think was the same person. I actually liked his other stuff, like the animated Black Dynamite series or the Boondocks, which he was involved with. But, um, kind of makes me question if he was involved with making the Boondocks and Black Dynamite, and even in some small capacity, did he transfer anything that he used there to here? Answer is, a few things that they just do not work. Fuck me, do they not work. Honestly, if you want a better Yasuke story, either read it up in the textbook or play the DLC in Neo 2. So I've heard. I haven't played Neo 1 yet, so, you know. I, I mean, I'm not exactly currently employed yet. Yet. I haven't exactly got my paycheck. Or attended my first day of work. But, you know. Progression and whatnot. So, those are my thoughts on the Yasuke anime. And, by God. It could have been great. It could have been fantastic. But that's the thing about could have been, right? That's the thing about hindsight. It's always 2020. And the past... Yes, they ain't looking good for this thing. I, I don't know what to say, man. I really don't. Other than Starman, signing out.